Now the third example is we're going to do something a little more, even more complex, and we're going to try to create an LOD4 model, which is a building with interior uh, features as well. And again, for this data for this, I essentially went on Google uh, Warehouse and grabbed uh, a random um, suburban building with interior detail. Now this this required a little bit of preparation um, in that everything in this model was on the same layer. So that wasn't very helpful. So I spent a little time in SketchUp and basically set the layer of the various features to what they actually were. So we have ceiling layer. I grabbed everything that was a ceiling, uh, put it on the ceiling, grabbed all the deck stuff, put it on the deck, etc. cetera. Um, this is kind of necessary. It, I mean, might be possible to do some of this FME with some complex filters, but in some cases, it's, it's really just easiest to go and fix the, the model to begin with. So now that I've, I've set up the different layers in the model, we're going to use those in the workspace to separate to the different features. So this, before the buildings I was created was a building with a single geometry, uh, so which is attached to the building itself. In this case, we're going to be building up that building geometry through the, the different building parts, like uh, building part, roof surface, ceiling surface, interior wall surface, etc. In that case, we still need a building feature but it doesn't require any geometry. Really, all it needs is an ID. So I take the, the main building, I strip the geometry from it. I set it to LED for multi-surface. Actually, that should be city object member. There we go. And I create now I create a building ID from essentially the base name of the uh, of the building, so the, the the file name prefaced by FME. Now it's important that you that you pick a building name that's sort of easy to to use uh, again because on all these other features we're going to be setting that same building name as the parent ID. So here we set it as a GML ID, and, and these other features we're going to be setting it as the parent ID, so they're correctly linked. All the wall surfaces are correctly linked to the right building. So that's the the building stream. Now the other stream is all the, the surfaces themselves. First thing we do is we want to de-aggregate it and, and break up that, like I said, the SketchUp model comes in a single piece. We want to get, break it up into its multiple pieces so we can separate it. Uh, we just create a little GML ID for it. And we, the reason we do this up front is that we're going to be using this a little bit later on because the openings are, uh, the doors and windows are also going to be attached to the walls instead of the buildings themselves. The next step is to get the SketchUp layer that I set in the SketchUp file. Now, these layers are traits on the geometry rather than attributes on the feature. So we use a, a, a transformer called the Geometry Property Extractor to extract that trait up into uh, a proper attribute so that we can, we can uh, root in the attribute filter later. Um, now I've aggregated, I've sort of grouped, I grouped the pieces within SketchUp so that these traits come through as a list because it's a list of traits on the individual geometry. So the first thing I have to do is I expose the list, and then I index the list because they're all going. I know they're all going to be the same. That the all the roof features are going to be in a, in a, in a single feature. So I know that the, the first value in the list is going to be the same as all the rest of the values. Now, I'm not very good with SketchUp, and I've made a few mistakes in that model, and I created some bad geometry. So we have some uh, interesting tools here. We're going to use that geometry part extractor to extract uh, some features that um, that's, that uh, City Gmail cannot handle. SketchUp uses lines a lot to sort of delineate the edges of their surfaces, and we can't use those in, in City Gmail. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of uh, the lines. And I know the lines are, have their entity name, type name of edge. And, and uh, there's also component instances in there which are essentially empty. I don't know how they got in there. Like I said, I'm not that good at SketchUp. But we can use this geometry part extractor to extract uh, things we don't really need. 
The other thing is that um, in extracting some of the, the, the lines we didn't need, these lines were grouped in and of, of themselves, and when you extract the lines, you end up with an empty group, which is a, a, a null aggregate, um, which isn't very good uh, and will, will confuse the CityGML writer. So we have a nifty, another nifty little transformer called the Geometry Validator. And this is very handy if you're unsure about the quality of your geometry or if you've done something you've extracted, you may have, you may have messed something up. So I'm running this through the Geometry Validator and I'm just getting rid of, I'm telling it to fix some issues that we might run into. Nans or infinities, sure, let's, let's, let's see if there's some missing uh, um, um, coordinate values. Um, let's get rid of all the null geometries. Are there any degenerate or corrupt geometries? Possibly. Let's get rid of those as well. Now, after I fix those, uh, if it finds a null aggregate and it fixes it, what it's going to do is bop it down to a, a null geometry. But again, we don't want any null geometries in our output. So I'm using geometry part extractor just to get rid of the, the null geometries that might have been created by the validator. So here's a little sort of QA process that you can do on your geometry, get it all nice and clean without having to say go in and fix it manually. The next step is to filter by the, uh, the SketchUp layer that we've extracted into the, the various uh, sections. Um, the first section is simple. That's just the driveway, garden, lawn. Those are all city um, city objects. So traffic area in this case, uh, city object member. The next set are actually parts of the building themselves, and those are set to multi-surface and consist of building part or uh, bounded by. And again, the proper settings for the proper features can be found in the, the tutorial um, tables at the bottom. Now, the, the next step is to tie these building parts to the, the actual building itself. And in this case, since um, the building ID was created from the file name, it's easily enough to create a GML parent ID and set it to the same, same value so that these, these parent IDs now automatically all point to the building ID. However, for the door and windows, it's a little bit more complex. Since they're not tied to the building, they're actually at another level and they're tied to the wall surface. Now, I cheated a little to make this easier and I just turned the wall surface into one big piece, the exterior wall surface into one big piece to, to simplify the process a bit. So what I do is I take a copy of the exterior wall here and I run it down into uh, just to create an attribute creator and I say let's create a fake join ID and set the GML parent ID to the same as a GML ID. So now we're, we're, we're creating a parent ID that's the same as its original wall ID. I use an attribute creator or attribute keeper to dispose of all the attributes except for that parent ID and the fake join attribute to ensure that nothing else gets joined to the, the walls and the doors. The walls and the doors, again, I create a, a fake join ID. And then I use a feature merger to merge that, uh, that GML parent ID onto the doors and the windows before writing them out. So now the doors and the windows will be attached to the walls, which are then in in themselves attached to the buildings. Now the output to that is we see our house here in the viewer. And if we look at the structure of the house, we have our land use and we have our building. Uh, the, within our building, we have the, the different pieces of the building. And now within our wall surface, we also have the windows and doors. So everything is hooked up correctly. And it's a proper LOD4. If we turn off the roof here, we can see we have the interior detail as well. And it all comes over, the textures all come over. So that's about the end, end of my demos. Um, I think we've just pretty much scratched the surface of CityGML writing. If you want to write any more complex uh, CityGML models or if you run into problem, problems, please feel free to contact uh, me at support at safe.com and I'd be happy to, to help you through the, the difficulties.